Hi everyone, imagine an AI tailored just for you, becoming your personal instructor. Beyond the concerns of students using AI like ChatGPT to do their homework, there's the potential for a profound shift in education. To understand what this will look like, we can examine other personalized approaches like homeschooling. Stay tuned to learn more. This video has three parts. What is education, personalizing education, and reframing expectations. Part one, what is education? It sounds like a silly question, but let's define education. One way of looking at it is that education is society's way of preparing kids for the workforce, preparing them to be economically productive individuals. And importantly, the skills you need to learn during your education are going to depend heavily on the technology of the time. Here's an example inspired by Dale Lane's TED Talk. We haven't always taught kids to read and write in school. For example, in the Middle Ages, when books were all written painstakingly by hand by monks, kids weren't taught to read because it was unlikely that they would actually ever own a book because they were so expensive. Once the printing press was invented and books could be mass produced, the story changed. Now, in order to be a productive adult, it was much more likely that someone would have to read books for signs, especially as the Industrial Revolution was kicking off. So we taught kids how to read and write. And now more recently, with the prevalence of websites and online publishing, you might not be writing by hand so much anymore. And now slowly, schools are starting to teach HTML, basic web publishing, and that sort of thing within their standard curriculum. We think of education as very core to what it means to be human. In fact, one of the definitions for AGI, in other words, human level AI, is whether the system can enroll in a university degree, take lots of classes, classes and graduate successfully. It's very hard to come up with a definition for something as open-ended as human level, but it's interesting that we fall back on education. If you can participate in education and get something out of it, then maybe you're intelligent. The problem with education right now, though, is that you have one teacher and lots of students, typically. You might have one teacher trying to give knowledge to 30 different students, all of whom are learning at different rates and have different preferred learning styles. The teacher has to proceed through the material at an average pace so that people don't get left too far behind. So students that do understand the material get bored and other students that are feeling lost get negative feedback like why aren't you understanding this you should be able to understand this while maybe they just have a different learning style and if enough attention was given to them they would have no trouble with the material you may have heard of Bloom's two sigma problem which describes this situation it states that suppose you have a normal curve a bell curve that describes the marks of the students for example that's what's happening under normal circumstances but if each student were to receive one-on-one -on -one custom tutoring instead of one on 30 interactions with the teacher then you actually get the results going up by two standard deviations. Two standard deviations is a massive difference. Remember, you have about 65% of the cases falling within one standard deviation and 95% of cases falling within two standard deviations. So if you shift the average by two standard deviations, that's a huge difference. It's like taking students that normally get C's and having them get A's instead. And the big question is, how can you afford economically to give all these students one-on-one -on -one instruction? Because it's difficult to do that, right? At least if the teacher is a human. And I've observed this a lot myself where in computer science classes in university you almost always have a double bell curve in any grade distribution. There are the pretty good marks from the people that are understanding the material and then there are the very bad or barely passing marks from people that are not grasping basic concepts. This happens in most introductory computer science classes and it's not because those students that aren't grasping the material are not cut out to be computer scientists. They often just have to have it explained to them in a different way. You have half the class not being served by the current model of education. So what could we do instead? Part two, personalized education. I'm going to start this section by talking about homeschooling because that's an example where you get really personalized education, one-on-one -on -one learning as it were. So actually I was homeschooled, believe it or not, and there are many types of homeschooling ranging from a virtual classroom where you have to sit in front of the computer and really be there at the same time as other students. We usually call that unschooling. And then there's actual homeschooling where your parents are sort of substituting in for your teachers and you have more of those one-on-one -on -one interactions. My experience was the latter. I was basically handed a textbook and had periodic check-ins to see how I was doing and would just spend an hour or two a day reading the textbook and doing exercises and that was it. Of course, legally speaking, the state has a responsibility to make sure that each kid is getting educated. So the way that works for homeschooling is you often have a check-in with a school board once a month, once a year, however frequently makes sense. And if you have a student who is really self-motivated or a student who can get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time from their parents, then you can do really well. This of course allows really rapid progress when the material is understood because you don't have to slow down to the average pace of the classmates around you. For example, I completed a high school chemistry class in just two months, although I wasn't doing much else at the time. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to pursue topics that interest you, which could be typical academic subjects or they could be other matters. For example, I studied programming.
programming and I went to science fairs across Canada and the US. Finally, of course, there are downsides to homeschooling. It made language learning very difficult. I started trying to learn French, but I didn't have anyone to speak with. I eventually ended up learning Latin, which was more about reading. And now I'm actually studying Japanese instead, which I wish I could have done when I was younger. It also makes socializing quite difficult, right? A lot of what kids are learning, they're learning from other people and they're learning to interact with other people their age. If you find other homeschoolers that are about my age, you'll find that a lot of them were homeschooled for religious reasons. Their parents were fundamentalist Christians and wanted to teach them something about the Bible or whatever. So I've encountered a bit of that stigma. People ask me, so are you strongly religious? And the answer is no. I was homeschooled just because I was a very good self-learner. These days, I think homeschooling is much more prevalent, so that stigma sort of goes away. Anyway, if you're interested, I can talk more about that in another video. So let me know in the comments if you want to know about some aspect of my homeschooling. And the reason I talked about homeschooling is because I want to draw some parallels with what AI will be like. When you have generative AI that every student can access at very little cost, then you can get that AI to deliver customized curriculum to each student to be the perfect tutor for their current level of understanding, to provide an immediate sounding board for really rapid feedback, and importantly, provide an environment where no one is afraid to ask a question. When you're a kid in a group of other kids, it might be really difficult to ask a question of the teacher because it means admitting you don't understand. But I think AI will change all this, and in fact, it already is. The last example was not a hypothetical. I've read about a student who is already using ChatGPT to ask questions that they felt too afraid to ask in real life in front of everybody. You can also watch the talk by Sal Khan of Khan Academy to get some ideas about how well AI can actually transform education for the better. I'll leave the link to that in the description. The benefit from my perspective is that homeschooling, remote learning, they become much more possible and the learning environment will encourage students to specialize at a really young age and focus on whatever interests them. Like I said, in my case, I might have just spent two hours a day doing the actual schoolwork and then all the other waking hours could be devoted to my hobbies like learning about programming, which actually ended up being much more important for my career. And when you start learning from such a young age, your brain is still really malleable. You can develop a really good understanding of the subject matter. For example, I developed the understanding to look at a full page of code on a computer screen and understand it at a glance, kind of parsing the structure in a 2D way with the image processing part of my brain instead of reading it line by line with the auditory processing part of your brain, which is what I hear lots of other people do. I talk a lot more about that in this video over here. You can check it out if you're interested. But the point is that if you have a really strong interest from a younger age, then you'll be able to learn it much more thoroughly than someone who just develops an interest during university, for example. I also want to mention how a teacher can actually leverage AI to help provide a tailored explanation to different students and to generate lesson plans and questions and quizzes, which is typically about 50% of a teacher's workload, not to mention grading. So students get a capable personalized tutor and teachers get a capable AI assistant as well. Part three, reframing expectations. What we don't want, of course, is AI to just enable widespread cheating. For example, if ChatGPT is writing all the students' essays, how much are they really learning? Actually, there's an argument to be made that in today's current environment, with access to generative AI technology, they're actually acting as they would in the adult world. But that doesn't help teachers who are trying to evaluate students. So cheating is only possible if the final product is the only thing being analyzed. There's a strong focus right now on standardized tests, on true false questions, on things that are easy to grade, and therefore also easy to generate answers for with AI. In other words, a focus on recall instead of understanding. When I was a TA, I could go up to some students, ask them a small number of questions, and get a very good idea about how much of the material they understood. Because it's a question answer type format where the next question can depend on the previous one. It's a lot better than asking the student to just write a ton of text and then take that text yourself and try to judge what they were thinking. It's basically like an oral exam. If you can ask lots of questions, you can tailor them, you can dive in on the parts that students seem to be weak at, and given a certain amount of time, that's probably the most effective evaluation you can do of that student. A couple of problems though. First, it doesn't seem completely fair, right? It's not as objective if you're just asking questions or doing an oral exam. And second, it's a lot of work for the professor or for the teacher. However, you could use AI to replace this mechanism completely. An AI could ask students lots of questions, Q&A, back and forth, try to judge their understanding. And then of course, you have the whole transcript of communication and you can analyze it and apply statistical methods and make sure that there isn't really any bias going on towards one student or another. I would probably get an AI to do that too. Again, the only reason we're using standardized tests is so that the teacher doesn't have to spend too much time evaluating each student and to really ensure fairness. But that's not a lot like the real world. For programmers, for example, when you're interviewing for a job, the actual test is the application of your knowledge in novel scenarios. You're going to engage in that back and forth question answering with the interviewer as they really dive in and try to judge for themselves on behalf of the company whether you really know what you're talking about. And they might ask you to write some actual code so that you can demonstrate that this isn't just book knowledge, it's really experiential knowledge as well. The key point here is that companies have the manpower to perform these one-on-one -on -one 
one human on human interviews because it's actually a large financial commitment from the company if they proceed with hiring that person. And until now, educators haven't had that sort of resource, but now they do in the form of AI. So I think it's reasonable to expect that the way we evaluate students will evolve over time and more towards this oral exam, question and answer, try to dig down and figure out, does this student really understand this material? AI is going to enable completely different means of learning. The same way when you're homeschooled, you might be off doing what you think is just fun stuff, but you're actually learning and potentially really preparing yourself for your future career. AI can let you do pretty wacky things like build a digital twin of people, modeling historical or fictional figures, and then allowing students to do a Q&A with them. There's a pretty big difference from reading some dry textbook about Benjamin Franklin and actually getting to ask Benjamin Franklin about kite flying. And if this is an interesting idea to you, you should check out The Collapsing Empire by John Scalzi, which is fiction, of course, but one of the main characters there actually has recordings of all of her ancestors' daily lives. And then all of that data is fed into an AI model, essentially, that produces a virtualized version of all of her ancestors, whom she could then go and talk to. Sorry, I couldn't resist putting in a book recommendation. The last way I think we have to reframe expectations is in when learning takes place. We think about students as being young people, kids or university students that are learning the basic skills for life. And then once they graduate, they don't really go back to school. And I don't think that's realistic anymore to expect someone to have the same job for their whole life. The pace of technology is fast enough that individuals are going to live through multiple paradigm shifts, potentially, that are going to change the way the world works, AI being one of them. We should be constantly thinking, adapting, learning new skills. Better not to have a strict separation between the learning portion of your life and then the working or adult portion. And I think AI tutors are going to make that much more possible. The same way you can kind of just use Duolingo to learn a little bit of a language here and there, you can probably lean on this AI tutor to help you throughout your day. And it may even be the same AI that you interacted with when you were younger. So it already knows you, it knows your preferences and how you learn. And I think that is going to be a huge boon for everybody. Finally, in conclusion, we talked about how artificial intelligence can be leveraged to make personalized AI tutors, which is almost certainly going to happen because it results in a two standard deviation shift in the grades that people get when they get one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And also expectations are probably going to have to change in terms of you're not just writing standardized tests anymore and trying to get the best mark, but you might be engaging in an oral exam of sorts to really judge your understanding of a subject. I also drew the comparison with homeschooling because that's another example of personalized education that already exists and which can produce really good results if it fits the student's learning style and they get the support that they need. And since I was homeschooled, I haven't made a video yet specifically about my homeschooling, but if you'd like to learn a little bit more about my own life, you can check out this previous video I made where I talk about what happened during my PhD. Please like and subscribe and tell a friend or two about the channel because I'm really trying to grow it at this phase and your help would be greatly appreciated. Okay, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.